going on guys and welcome to free pilot training. Today I'm going to show you how to fly a VFR cross country using just an old fashioned VFR nav log and just a simple VFR chart. I got my father-in-law Mike with me today and um, well he's about to do a quick run up for me. Uh, I want to talk about a couple things we need to do before we take off. First, the first thing we need to do is obviously if you want to pick up a VFR flight plan you need to go ahead and file that and I already did that right before we left here. Uh, another thing is that we need to write down our takeoff time. I'm expecting to take off about 7.20, uh, but we'll see what that actual time is here in just a second. And the last thing we need to remember to do is to hack the clock. Um, I'm going to be using this clock on the transponder today uh, for all the timing calculations. Uh, it's easy for both of us to reach, so this is a good one. Uh, you can always use a watch if you need to, but this is what I'm going to be using is the transponder. So we need to do those three things before we take off, otherwise our calculations are going to be out to lunch. One more thing I want to talk about before we take off is navigating to your first waypoint. Not many instructors explain this, but it's really important so we can start across country at the correct spot. Unless you're super lucky and your runway heading is aligned with your course, you're going to need a way to get to your first waypoint. One way you can get to your first waypoint is by using pilotage. This just means that we find big landmarks and use those as a reference to find our first waypoint. For example, I know that my first waypoint is going to be to the right of this giant lake, so if I keep myself right of this lake, I should be able to find it. Another way is to assume that you're going to fly runway heading for a couple of miles, then come up with a wind corrected heading to your first waypoint. And you'll do this the same way you calculated the heading for the rest of your legs. If you notice on my VFR nav log, I did this for both north and south float today, just in case the winds look better for a north departure. Alright, I think we're about ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and put this in the GPS just to back ourselves up. Alright, we're going to Kilo Whiskey, Lima Delta. Alright, direct enter, enter. And I'll put the nav up here. We'll talk about this a little bit more here in just a minute. Ready? Yes. Okay. Your controls. All right, my controls. Clock still running. I got seatbelts on, fuel selector valve on, both trim set for takeoff. Uh, let's see, makes your best power. Carb heats off, throttle set for now. Everything's good over there. We got the lights on. Uh, we'll go. We'll go ahead and go. Landing and taxi lights on for the takeoff. Clear right. Uh, we're going to be departing to the south. If you don't mind shutting your window, we'll get this puppy rolling. So on takeoff, I'm going to drive two miles, and then I'm going to make a right turnout uh, to, looks like 278 on the heading. All right, final's clear. We're ready for takeoff. Benita traffic, Skyhawk 3148, X-ray, departing 17, departing to the northwest, Benita. All right, power's coming in. Got wheel pressure. Airspeed's coming alive. We are ready to go. And right about here, I just made a huge mistake. I forgot to start the timer. And while it's pretty embarrassing for me, I'm going to go ahead and make the video with this footage because I think you guys are going to learn a lot more from my mistakes and see how to fix the problem if you were to do the same thing. There's 55 knots. There's our rotation speed. We've got some birds just above us, but they should be no factor. I'm going to trim this puppy out. We are safely airborne, landing and taxi lights coming off. Flaps are already up. After takeoff checklist is complete, uh, we're going to drive it out two miles and then we're going to make our right turn to uh, 278. And like I said, this is a heading I came up with based on my wind. So I got these winds 12 hours in advance, so they might be slightly off, but uh, we'll see, I guess. I'm going to try to get ahead of the airplane here. I'm going to go ahead and load in 28.6 because that's going to be Kansas City Center. And where you are listening. Climbing up to 4,500, that's a good westerly heading. Uh, we're using Sweden today. Um, there's about two miles. We'll go ahead and make a right-hand turn out to 278. Climbing out at 70 knots. This is going to keep us on track to hit our top of climb at the correct time. Expecting to hit our top of climb at, looks like, 10 minutes and 20 seconds. United 1984, contact Fort Worth Center, 135.45. I'm out at 70, and I'm just going to trim her up so she does all the work for me. And I forgot to hack. Let's say we're a minute behind right now. 
At this point, a minute behind is a complete guess. But once I hit my top of climb, I'm going to be able to make a lot more accurate estimation. And I'll show you how I came up with those numbers. But also, I'm going to show you another way you can solve the problem if you don't want to try to make estimations in flight. So I'm going to say I'm a minute behind. And then takeoff time was 718. As long as your estimated takeoff time is within five minutes of your actual takeoff time, this is going to be good enough. Because all you're going to be using this for is to let the flight service station know what time you took off. This is going to allow them to update your estimated time of arrival. But for your navigation calculations, you want those times to be within a minute if you can. Make sure we're flying our heading, climbing out at 70 knots. All right, let me make a departure call here. And Bonita traffic, Skyhawk 3148 X-ray, departing your airspace to the southwest or northwest, Bonita. We are up on 28.6 now. We're talking on COM2. That is Kansas City Center. Actually, I might try to go ahead and get on with uh, McAllister Radio. Uh, we'll try to pick up that flight plan. I'm uh, 4,500. We're at 2,500 climbing right now. We got a good heading. I'll go ahead and try to pick that up real quick. Looks like 22.5. Conquest uh, 4 and Kilo have a uh, scatter I'll turn them down for just a second here. Can 3 zero miles, 2 zero miles in diameter. McAllister Radio, McAllister Radio. Skyhawk 3148 X-ray transmitting and receiving on 22.5. I've tried to get these guys in the past, and uh, it's it's kind of hit or miss up here. I should be within range of this flight service station and at a good altitude, so I'm not sure why I'm not picking these guys up. I'll try again here in just a second. All right, 3,000 climbing, 4,500. Yeah, the winds, I I got the winds last night, at, you know, 12 hours in advance, and it looks like they're slightly wrong, so... Actually, as we're getting higher, it looks like we're getting closer to what we need, so this might actually work out. We're gonna try the, we'll try the flight service station one more time. McAllister Radio, McAllister Radio, Skyhawk 3148 X-Ray, transmitting and receiving on 22.5. Now we're up. If we don't get them, that's fine. Since these guys didn't answer today, I do have a video specifically on how to open up a VFR flight plan. So be sure to check that out if you need it. Back over to my heading. All right, so I'm not picking them up, so we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna go ahead and go to Kansas City Center, and we'll pick up flight following for the trip here. Four twenty-two, Kansas City Center. Good morning, flight maintain flight level three seven zero. That's the three seven zero. Four twenty-two. Four twenty-two, reaching one one thousand, clear direct to Igloo. Region 1, 1000 direct igloo for FedEx 422. Kansas City Center, Skyhawk 3148 X-ray. 3148 X-ray, Kansas City Center, Roger. Right, go ahead. Uh, yes, sir, 3148 X-ray, we're about five nautical miles to the northwest of Benita. That's Hotel 04, 3500 climbing, 4500. I'd like VFR flight following to Whiskey Lima Delta, that's Struther Field. Number 3148 X-ray, Squawk 2143. 2143, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 2998, 3148 X-ray, thanks. Cool, thank you. Look, climbing, getting a little slow there, I'm correcting. Okay, so, sorry about that. Uh, things I'm thinking about. We're still climbing up to our altitude. We want to write these ta times down as we, um, as we hit them. But, so I've got some acronyms. So, for each waypoint that we hit, uh, I want you to remember T-hat or top hat. Uh, the first thing is time. So when you hit a waypoint or your top of climb, write down your time. And then your heading. Uh, sometimes you need to change your heading. In this example, after I hit my top of climb, I need to change my heading from 278 to 282. As you can see here, the change is really minimal. But you might have to make big changes if you're trying to avoid airspace or something. Okay. And then A is altitude. Uh, 
you may need to change altitude sometimes, so that's just something to think about. Uh, and then the last thing is your turn point. What's the next turn point we're looking for? Uh, for us today, our next turn point is going to be an airport off our left hand side. That's going to be. Conquest 41 Kilo Kansas City. That's going to be Kansas no water. 32.25, good day. 3225, 41 Kilo. A little off my heading here. Head back here. Got 100 feet to level off. Okay, so we're at our top of climb. I got uh, 7 minutes and 30 seconds on that one. Now, normally, you just write that time down right here. But as you may remember, I messed up and didn't start my timing until a little bit late. So one way to fix your timing problem is to assume that your top of climb is pretty close to being accurate. I was supposed to hit my top of climb at 10 minutes and 20 seconds, but according to my timer, I hit it at 7 minutes and 30 seconds. So to make things easy on myself, I'm going to say I hit my top of climb at 10 minutes and 30 seconds because this is going to allow my timer to read exactly 3 minutes shy of what we actually are. Now if you're not very good at making top of climb calculations, you might not want to use this method. And to be honest, you don't even really need to fill in the top of climb timing information anyways. There's really not very many time, fuel, and distance calculations you can make until you get to your first waypoint. So now you're going to hear me correct myself and tell you that we're closer to being 3 minutes off on our timing. Then for the rest of the flight, we can simply add 3 minutes to whatever we see on the timer. Actually, we are probably flying closer to 3 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and write that down, 3 minutes, not 1 minute, uh, before I start the timer. So I, I skipped 3 minutes, so looks like uh, 10 minutes and 30 seconds. Uh, 25, 63, Kansas City, 31. Oh, I'm going to write that down. And after I went back and reviewed the video footage, I actually started the timer exactly 2 minutes and 24 seconds late. So my timing is about 36 seconds off at this point, just in case you were wondering. The other method is to simply restart your clock every time you fly over a waypoint. And this is by far the easiest way to do it because we know exactly how long each leg should take because we calculated those in these spots right here. So in this example, I need to restart my clock as soon as I hit my top of climb. And you can remember to do that by using the top hat acronym that we talked about earlier. But the bad thing about this method is that you have to remember to restart your clock every time you fly over a waypoint. That's why I like to write my total time over here. That way I only have to remember to hack the clock one time. Because as you can see, it's pretty easy to forget to do that. So once we hit our level off, we want to do our cruise checklist. Let's go ahead and knock that out. First of all, focus on getting level leveled off here. Five zero three minutes or less. And then the cruise checklist is going to be setting your proper RPM setting. So I chose 2400 today, as you can see on my um, nav log. And that's going to allow us to determine exactly how much fuel we're burning per hour. And it also helps us determine what our true airspeed should be. And that's the baseline for all our calculations. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and lean out the mixture here. And now we're ready to go. Uh, you will find some other things in other cruise checklists, but um, this air, that's all there is on this airplane. A little off altitude there. Yeah, we got a good headwind. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, slow we're going. Off to the left. All right, so our next waypoint is going to be an airport off the left-hand side, making sure that we're aviating. Are we flying the airplane? Are we wings level right now? Navigating. We're Arrow, Watching our heading, of Kansas City, flying the proper the, heading, I'm a little uh, off right now, I'm trying to get back, we're getting blown off course by these winds, I'm getting back to course here. Now I can hear that the engine's revving up, so I'm going to go ahead and re-pull that back. Right, six, Bravo, Bravo, Kansas City, Center, and good morning, they send a pilot's discretion, maintain 5,000 stillwater altimeter. Okay. Now that we're on our way to our first waypoint, I want to give you a memory aid that's going to make you an expert at these cross countries. I want you to remember clock to map to ground. I don't want you just looking for your waypoint before you get there. I want you to wait until the clock says that you're getting close. And what this does is it keeps you from biting off on a landmark that's not actually your waypoint. Here's an example of how that could happen. Let's say you're flying this cross country here and one of your waypoints is this road next to Owensville. If I'm just flying along looking for waypoints and I'm not paying attention, I could easily fly over this road right here next to Lonsdale and think I've reached my waypoint, but in reality it's still quite a ways in front of us. But by using the clock to map to ground method, if I wait till I'm about a minute out from my waypoint, then I'm way less likely to bite off on a wrong waypoint like this one. So if I take a look at my nav log, I should start looking for the Nowata Airport off my left wing somewhere around 18 minutes and 1 seconds of total time 
or 7 minutes and 41 seconds from my last waypoint. And for this leg, that was my top of climb. Yep, so 18 minutes and 1 second, we'll start looking outside. We'll start looking at our map and then look outside. Okay, another thing I could think about is, I did calculate a indicated airspeed for this trip, and uh, oh, we are off a little, little bit of our power setting here. Do not, if you don't have the proper power setting set, you make sure that you get that, and it can change as you're moving, so it doesn't hurt to periodically okay, check Hannibal, that Sierra, Kansas and adjust City it. Center, good morning, so what are uh, I'm expecting 96 knots point. indicated, so if I'm not seeing that, then I know it's going to take me a little bit longer to get to our destination. We are still speeding up because uh, we just leveled off a few minutes ago. Um, but we still need to be thinking about that. 3679, contact Kansas City Center 132.25. Delta 2428, that was for another aircraft. I got your check on a flight level 370, and you are still direct. Probably a little bit busier on the radios today because we're actually going to an air show in uh, Wichita. Uh, but we're not going to go all the way up to Wichita. We're going up to Strutherfield, which is just south of Wichita. Uh, and then we're going to get picked up by uh, picked up by the family. Might not be the funnest uh, video to make uh, going into the air show. I don't even know if you can land on McConnell or not right now. Brickyard 4535, contact Kansas City Center 133.47. Good morning. All right, so our first time... Now remember, we're looking for clock to map to ground. So our first time we're looking for is 18.01. I started my time three minutes late. Bravo, bravo, thank you. So, uh, should be at 15.01 where we start looking outside and seeing our airport. And I put a little L next to it, so that's, that means that it's off our left wing. It's good to pick waypoints that are either to the left or to the right because that way you can get your timing closer to being accurate. If you pick something directly underneath you, it's going to be difficult to tell that you're directly above it. Nine Bravo to maintain 3,100. So we are flying 82 knots right now. I was expecting 96. So I'm actually expecting to be slightly slow, uh, but we'll see. Where's that flight computer? Look in the side pocket there somewhere. Stuff in that uh, folder or made somewhere in there. Uh, can you take over just a second? Got it. Your controls. Should have checked that before we left. And this raises a good point. What if you forget to bring or can't find your flight computer on your cross country? Should we just roll inverted and pull or should we use something else to come up with our calculations? Don't worry, I'm not going to roll inverted on you here. Of course, it's not anywhere to be found. 422, expect higher in two minutes. Uh, look in that, did you look inside that folder there? It's definitely not in here. Oh. Well, I'll use the uh, 60 to 1 rule if we have to. All right, my controls. Two. Center envoy uh, 3590 is uh, 14,000, climbing 15,000. But don't worry, I'll go ahead and solve a couple of these with the flight computer as well. Alright, clock, we're at our time. So, look down at the map. What do we see? We see our airport off the left hand side. Now we start looking outside. Do we see our airport? No, we do not. We are. We're not up there yet. No, we're not quite there yet. Yeah, so we're looking for Nowada. I know where it yeah. is because I'm familiar with this area. Mike knows as well. Uh, so it's actually dead ahead, probably about 10 miles or so. So we are behind. We expect to be behind. But actually, now that my now that I say that, my indicated airspeed's up where it should be. But it's this headwind that's lowering our ground speed, and it's causing us to be behind. We weren't quite expecting this big of a headwind today. So as you can see, it's really advantageous to wait to the last possible minute to throw in your winds for cross-country planning. So we're going to be behind, uh, but we will see where we are next to our, once we get next to our waypoint. FedEx 422 leaving 330 for 370. You see it? Yeah, I got it. Okay. We'll wait till it's off our wing to get a good hack, uh, but he's seeing it out there. I think the winds might be just a little bit stronger than what we anticipated. So I'm three minutes behind on my timing. We should get there at 1801. So we should have got there at 1501. At uh, 422, contact Memphis Center 132.55. Yeah, 
and you're going to find yourself uh, trying to correct your heading like multiple times throughout the flight. It's it's going to be a constant struggle, especially if you're dealing with some kind of crosswind the whole time. So, Bravo, Bravo, it's uh, your prerogative. The uh, serious traffic's now about uh, 100 miles east of the field. Looks like they're entering a uh, left base and clear vision approach uh, to what airport. Now you select to cancel. You want to hang on to the IFR until you're on the ground. Bravo, Bravo, IFR cancellation received. Squawk too far. Frick, Santa Cruz, have a good day. Yeah, as soon as it's off our left wing there, we'll get a good hack. Okay, I'd say that's right off our left wing now. So we'll go ahead and get a good hack. So, T-hack. Time. The time I'm seeing here is 23.01. So, I'll add three minutes because I'm behind three minutes. That gives us a total time of 26 minutes and one second. Okay, so we know that it's taken us 26 minutes and one second of total time to get to our first waypoint. So if we want to know how long it took us to fly this leg, all we need to do is subtract 2601 minus 10 minutes and 30 seconds. Now we can see that it took us 15 minutes and 31 seconds to fly from our top of climb to our first waypoint. Now, if we'd been resetting our timer on every waypoint, we wouldn't have had to do any math here. We'd simply fill in our time here and reset the clock. But if you're using total time like I do, you'll have to do a little bit of math to get this number. Alright, so time. We wrote down our time of 2601. Took us 15 minutes and 30 seconds to get there. Heading. Now we need to fly 282. I have a 282 heading set now. Altitude. We're at 4,500. Turn point. Our next turn point is the Bartlesville VOR. And I'll dial that in here in just a second. But for now, let's do some calculations. Okay, 2601. So we're behind. Anytime our timing calculations are behind, the first thing we should be thinking about is whether or not we have enough fuel to get to our destination. But there are a few other basic questions we might want to find the answer to. Before we can do any of those, let's fill out our nav log. The entire purpose in this thing is to make it easy to calculate all this stuff. So think of this as a tool that's going to help you, not something you have to accomplish when you go fly. Okay, so we know that it took us 15 minutes and 31 seconds to go 11 miles. Now let's pull out our flight computer, and I'll find 11 miles on this outer ring, then rotate the whiz wheel until 15.5 minutes on the inner scale lines up with that. Then I can read my ground speed across from the rate triangle. Looks like our ground speed was just over 42 knots. Good grief, we had a kicking headwind. And now that we know that, we can answer just about any questions we might need to know. The first question I might want to know is how long it's going to take me to get there. Well, if you look over here, I wrote down our distance remaining in red. Looks like we have 73 miles left on this trip. Now, if I continue to fly the exact same ground speed all the way to my destination, my flight computer is already set up. All I need to do is find my distance remaining on the outer ring of my whiz wheel and look across from that to see that it's going to take us another 103 minutes to get to my destination. That seems excessive, doesn't it? Yeah, it is a little. If you start making calculations immediately after your top of climb, your numbers aren't going to be very accurate because once you level off, you're going to be speeding up from your climb speed to your cruise speed. And this can mess up your calculations a little bit. But just to be safe, I'm going to check and see if we're going to have enough fuel for this trip if we were to stay at the same ground speed. To do that, I'll grab my flight computer and spin in 7.1 gallons per hour under the rate arrow. Then I'll look for 103 minutes on the inner ring. Then I simply look across from that to see that we should burn 12.2 gallons the rest of the trip. Up to this point, it looks like I should have burned 30.9 gallons of fuel. So if I subtract 12.2 from that, it looks like we're going to have about 18.7 gallons of fuel left when we land. And this is going to be way more than the required 30 minutes of fuel reserves of 3.55 gallons. What if I want to know my time of arrival? That's easy. All I need to do is look down at my watch, then do a little bit of math. If the current time is 7.44, all I need to do is add 103 minutes to that. 103 minutes is 1 hour and 43 minutes. So I can just add that to 7.44 to see that we should arrive at 9.27 a.m. Now we got our time, heading of 282, altitude 4,500. And then our next turn point is going to be the Bartlesville BOR. And that looks like it's going to be on 117.9er. So 117.9er. Contact Fort Worth Center 132.2. Go ahead, slip that in the active here. And the one that we're looking for is a 22 radial. So we'll go ahead and set 22 in there. And as soon as we get a from indication, the needle is centered. 
then we know we're on that waypoint. We still want to use clock to map the ground on this one, but it's not as important since the uh, CDI is going to center right on our right on our waypoint. The difference being is that uh, we're not going to know our distance from the station, so we might be left or right of course. It's impossible to know without looking down at the ground Over outside. Nine, seven, four, six, seven, Kansas City Center radio check. And the All right, so we should the station, cross that uh, Bartlesville VOR at 32 minutes exactly. Hello, Center, Envoy 3822, climb at 10.3 for 15,000. Envoy 3822, Kansas City Center, good morning, clear direct to Arnett, on the maintain, flattable 230. Direct to Arnett, up to 230, Envoy 3822. This aircraft has one information, go back to segment 10 Central for Texas, Oklahoma, Delta 1455, available flight service frequencies. That, uh, he's saying there's some weather. If we wanted to get that, we could listen to the flight service frequencies oh. to get that. Okay, so we've got a few minutes before we get to our next waypoint. But on the way, I want to talk about what to do if you get off course. There's a bunch of different techniques out there, but I'll show you one that I like to use. First, you need to make sure that you know exactly where you are on the map. And you can do that by pilotage or whatever. And once you know that, you can determine how far you are off course using your plotter. And once you know that distance, here's a little trick to get you back on course without too much work. For every one nautical mile that you're off course, apply a 10 degree course correction for 3 minutes and 30 seconds. For example, if I'm on this leg and I'm one nautical mile to the right of course, I should fly 272 for 3 minutes and 30 seconds. Then I'll simply go back to my original heading of 282. Now I want to say this math is calculated at 100 knots ground speed, so subtract a little bit of time if your speed is faster. For instance, if I was flying 120 knots ground speed, I would do this for 3 minutes and see what that got me. Alright, so we're looking for clock to map to ground. So clock. Uh, at this waypoint, we should be looking for 32 minutes. And remember, my timer's 3 minutes ahead, so I'm actually going to be looking for 29 minutes. Sure would have been nice to hack the clock on takeoff. Then I wouldn't have to do all this stupid math. Map. We're looking for the 2-2 radial off the Bartlesville VOR. Then ground. If you're close enough, you could see the VOR on the ground, and we actually saw it. You may not be able to see it in the video, though. Alright, CDIs are starting to come alive here. Jet 356, contact Kansas so we're just waiting for that CDI to 25. center. And then we'll do our T-hat. Once the CDI is center, we'll go ahead and use this one. It looks a little bit more accurate. So right there, the CDI is center, we know we're on our waypoint. So hack, we got uh, 40 minutes and 43 seconds. I took off 3 minutes, or I started the timer 3 minutes late. So we'll do 43 minutes and 43 seconds. 43 minutes. 43 seconds. All right, so we'll do our T-hat, we got our time. Heading, heading is 282, altitude, we're staying at 4,500, and our next turn point is going to be a field off our right-hand side called Trophy Ridge. This might not be the best waypoint, but there's not a lot between here and our uh, destination, so we'll see if we can see it. It's gonna be off the right-hand side. Now let's make some calculations and see if our ground speed is any better on this leg or if that wind's going to keep us at a grandma pace the whole way. Okay, so our total time was 43 minutes and 43 seconds. So we can subtract the time at our last waypoint from that. Looks like that was 26 minutes and 1 second. It looks like it took 17 minutes and 42 seconds to fly this leg. And once again, if we wanted to restart the timer on every leg, we could just do that instead and write that in here if we wanted. Okay, so it took us 17 minutes and 42 seconds to go 20 miles. So let's dig out our flight computer and now we can find 20 on the outer ring and rotate 1742 over to that. And it looks like our ground speed is 68 knots. We've sped up a little, but we're still dealing with a pretty impressive headwind. All right, so now how long is it gonna take us to get there? Well, it looks like we have 53 miles to go. So let's look back at 53 miles on our flight computer. And across from that, I'm seeing about 47 minutes. So we can expect the rest of this trip to take us 47 minutes. Let's go ahead and take a quick look at our fuel situation again, now that we have a little bit better idea of how long we have left. I'll spin in 7.1 gallons, then I'll look across from 47 minutes on the inner ring to see that we should burn about 5.6 gallons the rest of the way. Okay, now that I know that my time is way off because of these winds, 
Should we still use these original fuel calculations over here to see how much fuel we should arrive with? Probably not, but all we really need to do is find out how much longer we've been flying than we expected. Well, we were supposed to get here at exactly 32 minutes, and we actually arrived at 43 minutes and 43 seconds, so we've been flying 12 more minutes than we expected. So that tells me that we burned 12 more minutes of fuel than we expected, too. So let's look back at the flight computer to find 12 minutes on the inner ring. Looks like we burned 1.4 gallons more than we anticipated. Not really a big deal today. So, if we have 29.2 gallons of fuel on board, we can subtract 1.4 from that, then we can see that we're going to have 27.8 gallons left. Then, if we need 5.6 for the rest of the trip, are we going to have enough fuel to make it to our destination and have the required fuel reserves? Yep, it looks like we're going to land with 22.2 gallons, and that's more than enough to be safe and legal. Okay, we're back on our heading here. Looks like we're trimmed. Hey, Charlie, hey, Level flight. Okay, so they're there. 28 Mike Alpha, contact Oklahoma City Approach 124.6. G'day. Oh, are they there already? Yes, yep. Taking us way longer than we thought. Well, the wind, uh, yep. Yeah. Wing 1320, say rad condition. Are you, is that the weather? Yeah. This thing thinks that we're uh, 44 nautical miles out. We're going 71 knots, so like uh, yeah. we're roughly 30 minutes. Line, yes. 40 minutes. Yeah, 40, yeah. Uh, three tank of Papa's, scatters, a moderate precipitation, 12, uh, correction 11 to 12 o'clock. 100 miles, extends to about the Ponca City area. Actually, I think I see the field right there. Maybe, maybe not. All right, so we're about a minute away from our time. So, clock. We're getting close to our time. Map. What should we see? We should see a private field off our right-hand side. So, we'll look at the ground now. Ground. One, one, zero, six, five, Kansas City. It'll be a little crash strip off our right-hand right side. This one's going to be a little bit tougher to see. Like I said, I picked this waypoint because uh, there's not much out here. Uh, hey, Charlie Tango, Clay, direct to Durango Airport. Let's see what we can see here in a minute. Now, if you ever fly over your waypoint and you don't ever see it, it's really important that you continue the flight just like you would have if you did see it. Allow the clock to continue if you're using total time like I do. And if you're restarting your timer on every leg, go ahead and restart it at the appropriate time. I don't see it. Uh, that'll it's only 980 data. feet long, so it's a short little... Yeah. Out of 3,100 direct to 80, say 47. Alright, so actually, I think I do see it. It's right there below us. Doesn't look like it's used much. Okay, so time. I got 55, 43, so 56, 57, 58, 43. Okay. So 58, 43, time. Heading. Uh, we're still on a 28, 282. Or should be 281 now. Okay. Altitude, we're still at 4,500. Turn point. Our next turn point is a road bend. Okay, now. Alright, let's go ahead and write down our time of 58 minutes and 43 seconds. Then we'll solve some problems using the 60 to 1 rule. And you're going to see that this is actually quite a bit faster than breaking out the flight computer. Alright, let's take 5843 and subtract 4343. And we can see that it took us 15 minutes to fly this leg. Then, all we need to do is take our distance of 17 miles and divide that by 15 minutes to see that we're going about 1.13 nautical miles a minute. If I wanted to know my speed in nautical miles per hour, I could just multiply my nautical miles a minute times 60 and this will give me 68 nautical miles per hour. Oddly enough, that's the exact same speed we calculated on the last leg as well. Now if you're using the 60 to 1 rule, I recommend writing your nautical miles a minute in the square instead of your nautical miles per hour. You're going to find that a little bit more handy. And now, if we want to find out how long it's going to take to get to our destination, all we have to do is divide our distance remaining of 36 miles by our nautical miles per minute. So, 36 miles divided by 1.13 equals 31.86 minutes. Now, to find out how much fuel we're going to be burning the rest of the way, First, we need to find out how many gallons of fuel we're going to be burning per minute. So let's take our 7.1 gallons per hour and divide that by 60. We're going to be burning about 0.119 gallons per minute. And if you notice, I figured this out before the flight and I wrote it up here on the nav log. That way it's handy when I start making my calculations. Okay, so to figure out how much fuel we're going to burn the rest of the way, 
All we have to do is take our time remaining to our destination of 31.86 minutes and multiply that times 0.119 gallons per minute. And when we multiply those two together, it looks like we're going to be burning about 3.8 gallons the rest of the way. Divided by 3148 X ray center. Go for 3148 X ray, sorry about that. Number 3148 X ray, change to my frequency 127.8. 278 3148 X-ray. And Kansas City Center 3148 X-ray up on 1278. 3148 X-ray, Roger. Hawk City, Altimeter 29905. I was going to have the trailer report inside. 29905, Wilco, 3148 X-ray. Okay, while well, we're driving to the next waypoint, I want to talk about a couple more things real quick. What happens if we get lost? So, obviously, you've got a lot of tools available to you if you get lost. Uh, but one thing you can remember is the three C's. Climb, conserve, confess. If you climb up, it might be easier to spot waypoints that you didn't see before, especially lakes. Lakes are some of the best waypoints to try to find if you're lost. And then cons uh, climb, conserve. So by climbing up and slowing down to best glide speed or best endurance, if your uh, POH just tells you a best endurance, that's going to get you the best uh, fuel burn uh, for your engine. And then confess, whoever you're on with, whether that be Kansas City Center or uh, you can even talk to flight service stations and tell them you're lost. Just fess up, confess, and then uh, from there they can help you get a vector or whatever. Uh, but like I said, you know, you, we've got all these GPSs, VORs these days, so you shouldn't be getting lost. But if you were to happen, you, if that were to happen, you can you can use a three C's: climb, conserve, confess. Okay, so something else that you might get asked to do is to defer. What happens if, you know, the field straight ahead of us is on fire or something crazy is going on. They close the field for something. You need to know how to divert. And the first thing you need to do is plot a course immediately and then immediately head that way. Um, modern GPSs like this one have lots of tools available to you. You can hit this nearest button right here and then uh, it'll tell you what field's closest and then you can just go direct enter and almost all of them have that sequence of nearest direct enter and you can go direct to that field. But whatever the case, if you just want to use the chart that you have in front of you, that's another option too. Just plot the course and immediately turn that direction. Get headed the right direction and then you know solve problems after that. All right, so another feature you have available to you is on almost all GPSs. If you notice right here, this DTK, and then we have a TRK, this DTK is your desired track. This is basically your course that the airplane needs to fly in order to get to your destination. That's your desired track. And then over here we have your track. This is your actual track uh, that tells you, uh, it's not your heading, it's your track. So if we want to get back on that track, in this case we'd need to make a slight left turn to get back on track and then as you can see it coming over right there you can look over and see what heading we're flying and then from there you can just fly this heading the rest of the way. The uh, full thoughts, I'm under 2996, show you 3500 and uh, change to my frequency 128.6. Okay, I'm ready. Uh, your airplane. My airplane. Visibility 1-0. Sky condition clear. Temperature one niner Celsius. Dew point one seven Celsius. Altimeter two niner niner eight. Vermont. Two niner niner eight. Density altitude one thousand niner hundred. Winfield, Arkansas City, Kansas, Strother Field Airport. Automated weather observation one three two seven Zulu. Wind zero eight zero at zero three. Visibility one zero. Sky condition clear. It's a straight crosswind. We'll go ahead and land to the south like we planned on doing. Yeah, this let me double. Well, but that'll allow us to enter a left downwind for uh, one seven. All right, another six minutes or so, and uh, we should be able to look at our map and then down at the ground to see if we're close to our waypoint. Four five two five Roger Fox Trot ninety eight Shaw Show. Oh, you guys should get back pretty quick, though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Should be, like, twice as fast. See if I can see that plane about to shoot right underneath us here. Yeah. He's running about 171 knots. Oh, he's underneath us? Yeah. He's 2,400 feet below us. When you start to make your descent, I've got some... Uh 
traffic just below you and ahead, 2,500. Looks like they are climbing and quite a bit faster. They should uh, outrun you. Uh, Roger, we got him on ADSB, but uh, we'll keep an eye out for him. Thanks, 314 at X-ray. Okay, so we're getting close to our time. So we got clock to map to ground. So time, close to our time. Uh, map, we should be crossing a road bend. And we're cl crossing on the right, right hand side of this road bend. Uh, so now I start looking outside. Ah, I see the road bend. In fact, there's a little bridge right there. I don't uh, know if the chart does not depict a bridge, but um, there's actually a pond there, so I do see that. So we're definitely about to cross our waypoint, and we'll get a really good hack on this, and we'll do one more computation. All right, let's go ahead and hack the clock. So I'm showing 70. November 776, November Golf, you've got the frequency and error. Contact Kansas City Center, 120.20. Let's call it 78 minutes, exactly. All right, 78 minutes exactly. So that took us 19 minutes and four, two, five, two, five, say again. seven seconds. All right, 19 minutes and seven seconds. So let's go ahead and do some quick calculations and then we'll head down to the field. Okay, so we went 25 miles and it took us 19 minutes and seven seconds. Let's call that 19.1 minutes to make things easy on ourselves. Let's take our distance of 25 and divide that by 19.1 to see that we're traveling 1.3 nautical miles a minute. Now that's our ground speed, so I'll write it in here, and honestly, I don't even care about my nautical miles per hour. I don't need to know that for any reason. Now, if I want to know how long it's going to take me to get to our destination, all I have to do is take our distance remaining of 11 miles and divide that by 1.3 nautical miles a minute. Looks like it's going to take us 8.46 more minutes. And if I wanted to know how much fuel we're going to burn in between here and there, I could just multiply that by our 0.119 gallons per minute that I wrote up here in the corner. Looks like we're going to burn just barely over one gallon between here and our destination. As you can see, once you get the 60 to 1 rule figured out, this is definitely the way to go if you want to be super precise, fast, and not have to lug around a flight computer. But it does take a little bit more practice in the beginning. Anyway, our top of descent is our last waypoint today, and it's 5 miles from the field. I calculated that at 500 feet per minute so I can hit my pattern altitude exactly 1 mile from the field. It's kind of amazing how much you can accomplish with just a little bit of math. On here, I've got 6 miles out, we'll start our descent. Tango, Kansas City Center, good morning. And we'll do 500 feet per minute. Alright, my control. And Kansas City Center, Skyhawk 314 X-ray, we got Strother Field in sight. 1 mile from field site. Did I step on somebody? Block. September 3148 X-ray, Strother Airport, 12 o'clock, 7 miles, report the field inside. Inside, 3148 X-ray. 3148 X-ray, Roger, Idafic, no traffic between you and the field, squawk BFR, freak change approved, good day. BFR change approved, thanks for the help today, 3148 X-ray. November 42525. Alright, 228. Alright, so we're going to start our descent at 6 miles because that's what I have planned. Uh, we'll see how well this works out. There it is. And we're planning a 500 foot per minute descent. Alright, seatbelts on, fuel selector valve on both, makes your best power. So we'll just set 500 feet per minute on the descent see what that gets us. So pattern altitude should be... 2,000. Alright, so 2,000 on the pattern. Now because this video took way longer than expected, all my GoPro batteries died at the same time. So to make this video aesthetically pleasing, I leave you with my landing footage from the other day. But here are two words of wisdom you can take with you on your next cross country flight. First, don't forget to hack your clock on takeoff. And also, make sure you get the most current wind data you can before you go fly. My calculations were off by nearly 17 minutes today because I got the winds 12 hours in advance. And I wasn't expecting a headwind nearly this strong. Anyway, I hope you learned something today. If you did, please hit that like button for me and see what other videos I have available. In my next Private Pilot Ground lesson, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about weight and balance. And when that video is finished, I'll put it right here. Thanks for watching. See ya! Approach, you're not going to believe this. I just bought a free pilot training. I'm going to keep on watching.